For the future, the USA women's team has shown great uh, capacità and we have great potential. Uh, so we're excited for this year of, of 2022, right back into a world championship year. And so this will be a, a huge challenge playing in Poland and playing in Netherlands. Great, great teams there. Maybe some world problems get solved and Russia will be there too, but who knows? Um, and so we look forward to a, a wonderful year with um, some younger players and uh, all the teams will look a little differently as they all now start preparing for this new Olympic cycle that in a little over two years leads us to Paris. I don't know if there are any secrets. We're very lucky to have incredible players, players who have such great experience. Uh, the, the women are just, they're good people. They work really hard. They're very professional, very intelligent, and very disciplined, and uh, they were willing to make great sacrifices. So that's true both with our indoor team and, uh, and with the women's beach volleyball team of April and Alex. And then also even for our women's sitting team in the Paralympics, they too won a gold medal. So it was a, a great tournament for women in last year in Tokyo. Um, and then the men have had great success also, uh, both in the 1980s when I competed and then more recently in 2008 in Beijing. So all those players, not only do they have all those capabilities, but they also know how to compete really hard. Americans tend to love to compete, love, to, love competition, and so that, that helps the teams also. Jordan, in, in my opinion, is the, the greatest ever to, to play for the USA women's indoor team. Three Olympics, three medals, one of each color, uh, and also a world championship gold medal. So the only two major titles that the USA women have ever won, Jordan played uh, really important roles for both of those. So I think Jordan coming to play here for a great team in Monza um, is a wonderful opportunity for Dana as a young player to learn how to be a wonderful and great and exceptional professional, but also an opportunity for other players, not just, the, uh, not, not just Dana, but players from every country have a lot to learn from Jordan. And then Dana, um, on the other side of that, is the vision of an exciting future. And uh, she's just now finished with college after winning a big championship in December with her University of Wisconsin team. And so it's exciting to see her now move on and make the big step, the big change to the next level, the world-class level. Athletes Unlimited is an exciting start to professional volleyball in the USA. Uh, I was just there about a week ago and I got to watch the first matches on day one. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for American women and also some players from other countries around the world like Sheila Castro from Brazil and Tong Kong Nutsara from, uh, from Thailand to build a professional league. I think it still has more building to go because it's only five weeks, only 15 games, and a true season needs to be longer than that, especially for players to pursue being great, pursue their own potential. Players need to be playing more than just five weeks a year. Much more like coming to play in Italy from October to April or May. That's a true season with lots of competition and lots of opportunities to learn and grow. The championship here is 
probably the strongest league in the world from top team to bottom team. Very deep, good players on all the teams. It's a wonderful challenge. So when a team wins a, a Coppa Italia, a Scudetto here, it's a great, great accomplishment. And it's wonderful for many Americans to be competing here. It's, it's a great opportunity. It's not the only strong league in the world, but it's, I think, the deepest. Uh, I, I think the Italian school does very well. The, the U18, the U19, the U20, U21, women, men, the teams are always contending for medals in world championships for the junior and, and youth levels. So they're doing a very good job of teaching the game and developing players. And I see that on, for both the, the women's side and on the men's side. Volleyball around the world is in a really good place right now. It's growing a lot. It's growing inside our country, inside the US. It's very popular. It's the most popular team sport. In a country like Turkey, it's almost passing football by, uh, especially on the women's side. It's extremely popular and all through Europe, whether it's here in Italy, Poland has done a great job of promoting the game. So people are very aware there's more spectators, there's more tifosi and fans than ever before. Um, and the Olympics are c continue to be a really successful competition. I also think it's good that the World Championships are coming to Europe for the women this year. So I think there are a lot of good things happening for volleyball, spectators, players, participation, um, and television too. In terms of some of the developments, I actually think there are some players in the women's game who do things that maybe are even more special in women's volleyball on the women's height net than some men do on the men's height net. But in general, if there are innovations, it usually happens a little more on the men's side and then soon after the women follow. So um, back row attack is um, continuing to be more effective and um, more terminal on the women's side than it has been before. And that's a big part of the men's game and attacking from the three, three meter line is a big part of the women's game too. Uh, we're seeing some more aggressive serving on the women's side. Uh, in general, I think the women do a better job in bagger, in, uh, in their platform, than the men. The men tend to receive serve uh, with their hands up high a little more. But I think there are certain things that are, that are parts of the women's game that are actually, um, I guess, executed at a higher level than the men do.